Boutique with your energy forecast for Wednesday, May 1st. So welcome to May. I'm going to encourage you to take a listen to May's energy forecast, to download your May zodiac forecast, to understand the energy shifts that are coming at us this month, and of course, figuring out how they are going to impact and influence your life the most. I'm also going to encourage you to jump over to Patreon because April's zodiac forecasts are now going to be free to the public. So you're going to be able to kind of take a listen, put things into perspective, really review, really understand what you aligned with, what you didn't align with throughout the month of April, because of course that was prepping us for the month of May. Definitely tap into all the resources that I put out there for you and your evolutionary journey through this energetic shift that is going to help you the most. Now, we're kicking off a brand new month on a Wednesday. That's Mercury ruled. It's very indicative that we are going to have a major change of mind, major change of perspective, major ideas pop off to us throughout the month of May. Even more than that, we are going to have our last quarter moon taking place in Aquarius energy here today. The highest form of the intellect, while Mercury rules over the lower form of the intellect. So there's no doubt that we are in a reevaluation mode. We're processing what is working, what isn't working, seeing things from a deeper, I'm going to say perspective. We are acting as the observer. We're seeing the intricacies, if you will, of our mind, of our, let's call it, vision that we are currently trying to build towards. Now, as if those particular energies weren't enough, this is also the last day that Pluto, the great transformer himself, is going to be direct. We are going to watch Pluto go retrograde here tomorrow on the second, and that is going to take us all the way in to the fall. So definitely take a listen to that particular forecast as well. And Really get that Taurus season e-guide out. Flip to this particular chapter, if you will, in your workbook and really capture the topics, the themes, the ideas, the focus that is currently going on for you. This is going to be a very important storyline that we are going to be unpacking over the next couple of months. So with all of that being said, there are nine different aspects taking place here today. Eight of them are going to involve the moon. Before we get into any moon energies, we are going to see Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, now in her rulership in Taurus energy, get into the boxing ring, square off, creating a lot of tension with Pluto, the great transformer himself, who is still direct in this Aquarius energy. So first of all, this is going to intensify our inner realm, really put the squeeze on our heart space. Again, take a listen to this week's Ascension forecast to kind of stay reminded on how this energy tends to manifest in the physical body, in the physical form heart activations there is an intensity building especially we're realizing new wants new needs new desires new passions are concerned we are kind of sitting in a little bit of a funk if you'll remember yesterday we have venus and saturn kind of pop off made us a little bit more introverted and isolated realizing what it is that we've been giving to other people that we're not getting back in return kind of made us realize where it is that we want more more out of life more out of our relationship dynamics and of of course, that puts us in a situation to figure out what it is we actually need to do to create that particular element of more. Venus squaring Pluto is definitely going to intensify those particular realizations. We are kind of looking at our options here, especially with the people in our lives. Again, Venus very connected to relationship dynamics, especially coming out of eclipse season. We've had a change of heart. Now we have to figure out what we're going to do about it. So yeah, we might kind of sit in the darkness because we're realizing that we want to speak up. We want to declare our affections. We want to talk about what it is that we're currently lacking and what it is that we want more of, but we're kind of hesitant to do that because we're afraid that doing so is going to put us in a situation to not only create conflict, but that we might actually be putting ourselves in a situation to lose certain people. Again, this is a darker energy, a heavier energy, but we do have to get really real about the power struggles going on within us, especially where our heart space is concerned. Because again, coming out of eclipse season where relationship dynamics were impacted the most, now we have to figure out what we're going to do about it. We are being kind of pushed 
into creating time, energy, distance, and space in particular relationship dynamics so that we can figure out who it is that we are without the influence of other people kind of tainting our wants, needs, and desires and figuring out what it is that we need to do for ourselves. There are new wants, needs, and desires that are coming up for us that requires us to go on a little bit of a independent solo adventure. And that in turn is a dramatic shift from wanting connection and intimacy and that one-on-one -on -one time all the time with people that we choose to spend time, energy, and space with. And again, creating a lot of worry that if we boss up, if we declare what we need to do for ourselves, that these people aren't going to receive that well and therefore walk out of our lives. So we're definitely struggling with some heart activations. Here's the thing though, the moon is going to go ahead and make this interaction with Chiron in a positive way. Now, Chiron is the wounded healer. And so this new version of self is now kicking in because again, egoic programming of the old version of self is what is creating the fear, the doubts, the insecurities, the rawness, the vulnerabilities. And the minute that we can realize that, we can shift into this new version of self, aligning with our higher self, aligning with our heart space, understanding what it is that we need to do to change, to transform our physical realms, especially where relationship dynamics are concerned, in order to honor this new version of self, these new wants, needs, and desires, this new passion, this new mission, this new truth. So we're starting to see the bigger, broader picture here of where it is that the power struggle currently going on inside of us is actually between the old version of self locked in fear and the new version of self that is locking into hopes and wishes, trust and faith. So 727 AM Eastern Standard Time, the moon is going to get into the boxing ring with the sun. So the moon is in Aquarius energy, again, giving us that ability to emotionally detach, to see the greater, grander picture of our lives at this particular moment without being so intertwined with the result, with the outcome that we get clouded judgment. The sun, of course, in this Taurus energy, this is air and earth, which typically speaking, don't get along so well. They are the furthest elements away from each other. But nonetheless, there is this last quarter moon phase that puts into perspective dating back to the new moon total eclipse in Aries energy on April 8th. We're putting things into perspective. We're putting things into focus. Now, keep in mind, this particular phase that we are in, it's not the best time to start something new. Instead, we are wrapping up the loose ends. We are reevaluating what is working for us, what isn't working for us. We're processing things from the highest form of our intellect, trying to get anchored in with that heart space as well from Taurus energy and Venus being in Taurus energy specifically. And again, when the moon and the sun come together in any kind of interaction, a new awareness forms, a new epiphany pops off, a new realization on what it is that we need to do, what it is that we need to pursue becomes a little bit clear. So the moon is then going to semi-square, creating a little bit of tension and conflict with Neptune in his place of power in this Pisces energy. Right now, we're having a hard time blending our intellect with our intuition. We feel like we have to choose one or the other when realistically, the answer is both. We need to kind of blend the highest form of our intellect with our heart space, with our intuition, with our higher self. That is how we are going to truly understand what it is that we're being called to do and pursue. Of course, this is all about vision. This is all about where it is that we would like to go from here, what it is that we would like to manifest. But again, intellectually speaking, we are, I'm going to say a little bit limited in the prospects. Whereas when we tap into our intuition, anything is possible. So again, the power struggle ensues. The moon is then going to sextile beautiful interaction with the North node in Aries energy. And again, that North node trying to get us on the right path to reach our soul's mission, our soul's potential. This is a beautiful energy because emotionally speaking, we're starting to piece together different alternatives that we could be exploring as far as what it is that we want to do, what it is that we want to pursue from here. We're starting to realize where it is that we're feeling a little bit more free, a little bit more liberated to choose to decide a different path, a different alternative that we may have not considered as of the most recent shift. Because again, this Aquarius energy is attempting to free us from some of the restrictions that were very much in our face over the last couple of months. 
the moon is then going to semi-square Mars. So Mars is the god of war. He rules over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires. He just shifted into Aries energy, into his rulership. He is just getting settled in that. We are just beginning a brand new two-year cycle of this hero's journey where we are tapping into a new warrior spirit, to boldness, to bravery, to courage. And this is going to pretty much light the fire, keep that fire lit within us in order for us to push forward and actually blaze a brand new path. But the moon interacting with Mars in this way, it is a semi-square, so there is a little bit of tension here. I would suspect that this is going to manifest in the physical form as anxiety or restlessness or agitation. Again, Mars in Aries wants to kind of get up and go, wants to take action, wants to make moves. But again, we're not in a beginning phase of taking action because the moon, again, we just reached the last quarter. This is about evaluating what we want to take action upon and realizing what we have to wrap up before we can do just that. So again, the ants in our pants are getting a little bit frustrated. We are definitely going to feel that anxiousness, that anticipation threefold. Now the moon is going to make a very positive interaction with Saturn. Saturn, of course, the modern day ruler over this Aquarius energy. Saturn being the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles and responsibilities and systems and structures and foundations. He's in Pisces energy, again, trying to collapse and deconstruct the old sense of belief, the old, let's call it ways of doing things, the old delusion, the old, let's call it perception of the world around us. Again, this is just like breaking down the veil so that we can start seeing life, reality as it is, instead of the way that we wish it would be. Now, the moon interacting with Saturn in this way is actually a very positive interaction. It means that we are taking a very logical, practical look at our plans, at our ideas, at our goals, of our visions, of our dreams, and we're starting to come up with an actual strategy on what needs to be done. First of all, we need the willpower and discipline within us to actually see this particular project goal path through. Secondary to that, something new needs to be built either new belief system, new routine, new energy, new action, something needs to be initiated that's going to help us build the framework to break away from where it is that we have been and start gaining momentum towards where it is that we would prefer to be. So this is a little bit of a reality check. It's not a harsh one. It's not a rude one. It's just realizing that we do have goals and visions and dreams that we do want to start pursuing, but realizing what needs to be built first and foremost to actually put us in that particular direction. The moon in Aquarius is then going to sextile, beautiful interaction, first with Mercury, direct in this Aries energy, and then with Chiron, again, the wounded healer in this Aries energy as well. So of course, the moon is our heart space. Mercury is our head space. They are on the same page. They are getting along. They are collaborating at this particular point in time that Aquarius energy is showing us the bigger, greater, grander picture, vision, possibility, opportunity for us to be building towards. While Mercury, ruler of the lower level of the intellect, is in Aries energy, really just looking to see what we can do in this present moment, what we can initiate, what we can act upon, what we can align with, that of course will be in alignment with the greater, grander goal and vision and dream that we're currently trying to piece together. The last thing that we got going on is this interaction between the moon and Chiron. And lucky for us, it's the sextile. It's a merging of energies. It means that we are confidently building in this new version of self. We are seeing the growth. We are seeing the ability to actually create new options and opportunities for us to grow, for us to heal, for us to expand, for us to advance. We are becoming a little bit more comfortable and familiar operating in the parameters of this higher self, which is overriding that fear, that doubt, that vulnerable state of being that has us constantly questioning whether or not we should pursue a new path or whether we should just settle for what it is that we are currently doing. Emotionally speaking, this is going to be a glow up. This is going to be more confidence, more optimism, more comfortability, more familiarity in this new version of self. And therefore, we are really pushing ourselves to bust out of the same old, same old, and to definitely start building towards this action point of pursuing something new.